Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 626. And the topic today is your second choice and chance may be better than your first. I think it may be better than your first. I may have to create, may have to create my title. Um, before I jump into this topic, because I had a conversation today that led to this, let me choose myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and also an empowerment coach for women. This is coming up new, and I'm going to reframe it as I go through this. And um, I help women find balance and create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which I led to these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic, again, is some yesterday's is actually generic in terms of which gender it's for because this is for all of us and I'm going to speak from my own experiences to share some insights and some perspectives that might give you some hope in case you feel like you've lost your chance, your choice, your opportunity to renew yourself. So those people who are looking for that next step or that renewed opportunity, listen up. Um, oh, I've got one thing. <laughs> this is a Facebook Live in case you're watching on YouTube. It'll be replay on YouTube. It's Facebook Live first. And I've been doing these now every day for a couple of years, so there's a lot of content out there. But this one is about second choices, second chances, and how they can better, be better than your first. So, PJ, nice to see you. Thanks for being here, sir. And I see a few other faces in here as well. So, um, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning, actually. Was asking, we, we started talking about, like, our origin. I mean, I, I use the term origin story because I've been very much in the superhero conversation recently. And having seen, having seen Spider Man in the Spider Verse yesterday, there was a lot about origin stories, which is really fun. Um, recommend a movie by the way if you haven't seen it yet I was very pleasantly surprised how much better it was than I thought it was going to be so that's the little movie promo on the side movie review I was talking to a friend of mine because he was asking about like where where I came from in terms of my origin in terms of business and focus and journey to get to where I am now in my life and in America and everything else and we were talking and I said a couple of things that were like oh yes that reminds me so a couple of things I want to drop on you and I want to first I want to give you this point and I'll explain my perspective and experience of it, is how, yeah, sorry, I just saw three things show up at once. <laughs> my mind does this, so bear with me. First of all, um, well, let me rephrase the title first, because that's going to bring up two, there's already got three things I want to say, and like, which one comes first? So, <laughs> let's start from the beginning. Oh, thank you, EJ. I'm live on Savvy Sisterhood Community. How nice. Well, it's actually interesting because I had a conversation with a friend of mine this morning about something that's going up for me as well, which is taking me is, is adding from the relationship conversation to really being about supporting women in empowered, enlightened, inspired state. So that's kind of where I'm going. So that's wonderful to be in that group. Thank you for sharing me there. I appreciate that. So we all have more than one chance, more than one choice to have what we want. For some people I know out there, they may have felt like that one that got away, they'll never have what they want in a relationship or in life, may not have had the job they ever wanted because they didn't come up the first one they had. Now, if you're like me, you've had several opportunities to learn these things. And I'll speak a couple of experiences just to give you examples from my own life where I was demoralized and depressed after I missed the first opportunity. But when the second one came up, it was way better than the first one because it was, and they didn't realize until afterwards. So I look back at hindsight, and 2020 hindsight is a great skill, by the way. But I want to throw a couple of um, quotes at you, to you, if you don't mind. One of which is um, that they say about um, opportunity, that opportunity does not knock once. It can knocks continually. In fact, they say that, um, you know, there's a statement about if opportunity doesn't if you don't get opportunity the first time opportunity will keep knocking and knock the door down as in there's so much opportunity coming your way if you just be open to it that's one thing secondly um, there was an, what was the other quote that was coming through it'll come back to me alright I'll come back to that in a minute so for me I'm aware of things that happened for example um, in I'm going to go back to high school that's how far I'm going to go back on this in high school um my grades weren't good enough to get me into university, so I actually went to a polytechnic, which in England is like a trade school, and end up work end up being in a school where it wasn't as highly qualified as an academic. Uh, it wasn't such a high qualification of academia as a university would be in England, like one of the good high universities. It was a polytechnic. Funny thing is, well, I found out a few years ago that the polytechnic I went to is now a university. So I, I it was before my time, after my time rather. 
But the thing was is that I was kind of depressed the fact that I didn't get into university because my grades weren't good enough. So I had to go through a lower level into polytechnic. Now, first of all, if it hadn't been for the polytechnic, I wouldn't have gotten to work in the business I was in at the time. And with that, actually, no, I need to preface that first. So polytechnic, like a trade school, basically has times in, in like industrial training between the academic schedule. So being in a place where I was at a, was a three year, it would have been a three year degree in England, England the degree, degrees are three years. There would also be, a, it would be a four year span because it'd be three one year periods with six months in between of industrial training or, or actually uh, uh, placement in business. And I was studying computer science at the time. And I was, got a chance to work, which is one thing. The second thing was, and the second, second chance, was the first opportunity I was given when we went through like all the, um, job applications we could be placed into, the placement opportunities from school. I turned it down because it was, it was not where I wanted to be and it didn't feel like, I just felt it wasn't aligned, even though it paid pretty well. And I was like, mm, it's like gambling. Do I say yes or no? And if I said no, because I didn't feel aligned. And what happened was I got put to the back of the list. So other people were getting assigned to jobs and placed and get ready to go out, out of all the students in, the cl in, in my group or in my class, I guess. So at the end of it, I was probably one of the last three that got placed the second time got offered a job, first of all in the middle of London, which was where I wanted to be, because I was actually, be, the other job would put me way out in the, count, in the, in the counties and be further away from home. Secondly, it paid twice as much, which wasn't a bad thing, being at that time 19, 20? 19. So I didn't, you know, being paid double what I thought was gonna be paid was a great opportunity. So the immediate surface benefits were amazingly better for the second time than the first time. Fast forward a bit. Because of that path, it got me placed, that, that job I got placed into, they put me into the German office. So I spent a year and a half, almost two years, living and working in Hamburg, Germany. That would never have been something I'd planned. So lots of good things get happening. And the truth was, because I worked in Germany and then in another company worked in Belgium because of the same job set up, it led me to want to leave England to live somewhere else, which is what led me to the States. And there's a whole other convoluted story. Well, there are a couple of things I drop in here too. I'm guessing I'm giving you my origin story. The thing is, to just to a broad, actually a, um, a condensed version of my life story, because <laughs> to save time, I started out in computer science. I've had five, six other careers between then and now. And what I'm doing now is evolving again, because I'm trusting spirit now. Because the other jobs I did, I didn't know I was trusting spirit, but they were convenient. It was the next thing that happened, the next thing that happened, and it just lined up. They weren't jobs that I was actually pursuing or seeking because to be honest, that's not been my drive. I've always felt, I didn't realize at the time, to trust a bigger guidance than I can actually have for myself. And what I'm doing now came directly from my personal growth journey and learning to understand who I was as a masculine man in this world. That's why I do what I do. And in fact, I saw a friend of mine um, about 10 days ago, and we haven't seen each other in about four years, and she noticed that I, I felt, she said to I felt different to her than I'd felt before. She felt myself grounded and in my truth and aligned to a deeper core than she'd ever felt me, which was a really nice feedback because I didn't, because I, being in here, I didn't notice the difference, but she did, which is very reassuring. Anyway, back to the, the, the point. We have opportunities all the time in life, in love, and this is one to speak to the love part for a second. Sometimes relationships show up and they really like think it's the right one, it's the perfect one, and something happens where you don't get it, whether it's because the person doesn't want to be with you or you don't want to be with them for some reason or something traumatic happens and you just get rejected. Oftentimes the second one that shows up is better than the first. Now, <laughs> a caveat on that. As I've spoken about a lot of my work in coaching and in the relationship conversation is so many people I know, because I did it myself, repeat the same patterns again with a new partner even though the partner changes the same thing happens again. So there's an improvement. So it's not like a second chance is better. That's a reminder that there's work to do, first of all. And secondly, it's a chance to really reflect on your own journey and reflect on your own um, patterns, shall we say. Your programming, your wiring, your automatic pilot that keeps you putting in the place you don't want to be in. Anyway, that's second. That's a different conversation. I talked about that before. And if that's something you're troubling you, I'll put a link in the comments for a discover session with me so we can talk. But the thing I want to say very clearly is that we forget how abundant our universe is, giving us opportunities for new things. As I said, I've had you know seven different careers, 
And just to give you a quick Cliff Notes version, I was in computer programming to start with, mainframe programming, commercial programming back in a long time ago. Um, that put me into a position I went from, I'm trying, I don't remember the orders exactly, but I was working, I ended up working for a seminar company because I was taking the seminars and was a national logistics manager, handling shipping and supplies and ordering and stuff like that. Wasn't related. Then I moved into, I moved into not the order, but into graphic design because I fell in love with the Macintosh computer. <laughs> Did that for a while, ended up working in the printing industry because of that, that was a direct connection. In the printing industry as a pre-press manager, so I ran a printing shop, pre-press. I was also a professional photographer a bunch of years because I got a camera when I was 13 that finally started paying the bills many years later. Um, there's a couple of other ones in there as well. I did sales twice, failed miserably. Because <laughs> se selling stuff that wasn't me, wasn't my work, doesn't line up. That's, that's clear, if I'm clear about that integrity wise. But speaking and coaching and teaching about love and relationships, and now being focused on really empowering women, because that became very clear recently in a conversation with a friend of mine, it became, became clear that it's time that I stand in my true heart, my masculine truth, and support, serve, and inspire women in their feminine power. Because that's the truth of my work, that's the truth of my calling. And it really is for me what drives me underneath all of this. The relationship work I've been doing is always to support women in choosing higher for themselves, to have what they really want. And part of that is to not always go with your first choice. I've got to tie it together with the title. The dance we have with this sometimes is that we think, and this is the piece I want to speak to is the philosophy, or I should say the, the mindset. For many people, we are so caught up in the got to have it, got to have it, got to have it, that we're scared of letting go of what is in front of us because we think it's the only chance we'll have. And I've learned the lesson many times over, and I hope you are realizing if you look back at your own past, you probably did too, that when you miss that, you don't grab that goal, you don't get that first chance, the second time it happens and you get it, it feels way better than the first. And the opportunity comes out and is better than the first time. And you have a better choice because you've got more perspective. The one of the biggest things I've learned a lot of times is one, having 2020, 2020 hindsight on those things that I missed, provide me with much better focus on where I want to go forward in my life. So don't uh, say this. I highly recommend you don't fall into the trap of judging and criticizing yourself for not getting what you want. If anything, I would prize yourself for maybe having the best choice you could have had, which is to say no. To step back and to learn from what happened so that when you choose in the next time, you come from a much more aware, awakened, and um, aligned choice because it's available to you. Making that choice from the first place, because the other thing also is that when we go through something, it's like having a test drive. You know, I, I have another one from my past. I, when I was in the process of buying a car, I test drove and I was buying used cars, test driving a few different cars. And my first choice that I thought was the one I wanted when I drove it, it was like, it doesn't feel right. It was actually the third car that I drove that was like, that's the one I feel is aligned to. And it's kind of that simplistic way of putting it. But that's the thing is that we don't always trust that when we don't have, the first thing we have that doesn't work was actually a test drive. And maybe it's the second or the third thing in that package where it's a job search or if it's a relationship um, piece, or it's a number of different dates, different people. The first one you have may not be the perfect one. So be willing to look at it as a learning or as a, or as a test drive or as a reminder that get it out of the way because sometimes getting the no out of the way makes the second one even better. There's a thing I remember hearing in, in sales and marketing about how the more no's you get, the more soon, the sooner you get to your yes. I'm not saying that's where you do your dating life. <laughs> not recommend that at all. But the reminder is, is that when you don't get what you want, that could be a blessing. I have friends of mine and clients who have, um, how do I say this in a way, a nice way, have sidestepped a relationship that would have hurt them badly and chosen a much healthier one. Like I know a friend of mine in particular, she was talking about how she basically went out with this guy a few times and just it didn't work out. They had a bust up and they broke up. She met a second guy who she married and is falling in love with and found out that the friend that this guy she dated abused the woman he was with after her. Now that's an extreme case. But the reminder again that what you think is perfect and doesn't work out might be a blessing in disguise. So the overall thing I want to say to you is that life can be an amazing adventure. And I would say the best thing is don't be too attached because that attachment could get you into trouble. I think that's a good enough note to leave it on, I think. <laughs> this one's one of those topics where I'm giving you food for thought. Thank you, PJ. 
it's what's been coming through and there was a conversation this morning that sort of inspired this talk and I've noticed my talks the last few days have been interesting yesterday by the way I do recommend watching yesterday thank you Sue makes sense learning opportunity and thanks for the great content thank you PJ sorry I'm repeating what you said thank you Nancy um, nice to see my broadcast because if you're watching on YouTube you want to see where the comments are going up on the screen so I'm just sort of repeating back what I see um, yesterday's talk by the way I do recommend watching it talked about a lot about superheroes as in we are all superheroes so I invite you to watch that one that was after watching the movie yesterday and using a Stan Lee quote that I thought was a beautiful quote about service and about being there for other people which I am in my, my work my passion I hope you are too so watch yesterday's broadcast too that was number 625 and uh, if you have any questions thoughts about this broadcast please put them in the comments below and I'll respond when I sign off and I'll give you the replay links oh well, thank you Nancy you're right there, with, right there with me we should talk at some point I know because I, I saw you post about your um, or you said in your broadcast yesterday about your women's gathering so there might be some collaboration I don't know be nice to, let's have a chat since you're in Minion Del Ra <laughs> as you put it <laughs> I mean Cobble said let's meet up for coffee and have a chat sometime anyway I'll talk to you offline um, replays my Facebook live goes out every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time always join me here please and the replays go onto my business page on Facebook yes okay well we'll talk um, I, I've got serious spo what's spo day oh spidey senses you, you missed I think you mistyped that that was an interesting thing spidey senses yeah <laughs> that by the way again Spider-Man is the Spider-Verse was a, if you like superhero stuff was so much fun because it was way more than I thought it was going to be the story writing the interaction of the characters it was fun to watch so anyway, all right so replays <laughs> I'm trying to finish here <laughs> first um <laughs> thank you Sue for that Spidey senses yeah so Facebook lives are um, on replays on my business page which is facebook.com forward slash Barry author and by the way my personal page where you can find me if you're not watching this on YouTube you can always find me on Facebook is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby the replays go on to YouTube which is on YouTube channel is Barry Selby please subscribe to me there and there's a playlist on there called messages from the masculine you can watch all of me at my replays there and then finally I got a podcast which I might be revamping at some point soon because I had a friend of mine talk to me about that today excuse me which is um, uh, on iTunes which is Messages from the Masculine subscribe to my YouTube my uh, podcast and you can download the audio versions of my talks I think that's everything questions comments please put them below, below and I'll respond when I sign off and um, thanks for participating and enjoying I hope this has been a value to you and if it's been a value to you please share it with your friends and uh, take this message to heart there's more than one opportunity coming your way be open be receptive and be willing to step back and take a big view because you never know how good it could get maybe better than you could even think with that i'll leave you to ponder that one and i'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m pacific time take care see you soon bye <laughs>